Hey YouTube, this is Jay Kilroy. Um, just a quick, quick video on uh, something that people don't like to do in general, and that is tramming the millhead. Um, I need to do a little project here where I'd like to utilize the overhead spindle, the uh, overhead arm of the mill here. It's Kearney Trekker uh, 415 S15. And as you can probably tell just from uh, your uh, casual observation, uh, we're a little less square from a project that I did uh, a while back. I had to cant the mill head up to get started. And I uh, uh, just wanted to show you the process on a machine similar to this. Uh, there's machines of uh, similar overhead arm configuration from a variety of companies, Lagoon, Cincinnati, Kearney Trekker, uh, several others. Uh, this is what's kind of referred to uh, as a universal head. It uh, rotates in both axes here uh, around the uh, long axis and then also front to back. Um, and what I've done so far to get started, you got to have big wrenches when you're on machines like this. Um, there are four bolts, four studs that come through the front here that lock the head in that position and there are four more uh, back here and I'll get the camera and pull it in close so you can see all this. There are four more back in here that lock the head in that position. All right here's the scale and uh, right here we're right can't really make it out but we're right on 90 um, this is the raising and lowering mechanism. It comes off of both sides. It's a serious labor saver. Here are the lock bolts I was telling you about. And then you can see the uh, size of this thing. Give you a little scale here. Uh, it's about probably, uh, I guess about 600 pounds worth of metal here. Walk around the other side. ladder here. Uh, there's the lock bolts there on this side and then you can see the ones back there on that side. Top of the raising mechanism. So I'm not messing around here so I went ahead and uh, they take a one and a sixteenth wrench by the way. I went ahead and loosened those full bolts. Then there's a uh, screwdrive mechanism at the top of the overarm that you see this uh, ratchets on here that allows me to uh, adjust the position of that uh, head and it has a 5-8 square shaft on it so what you want is a 5-8 uh, square socket this one's a little dusty I basically just leave this in, the, in that position and then this gives me the capability to adjust this head up or down. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and crank it on down. I've got a scale that I can read about right here. Clean that off a little bit. And allow me to uh, see what I'm doing. At least I can get close to zero without uh, having to get any tools, measuring tools, or anything else. I can get pretty close. Okay, that's pretty close right there. What I'm going to do now is going to very lightly snug up a couple of these bolts just to keep it in position. Go. All right, you can see what we got here. Um, we've got a mag base stuck to the table, which I kind of wiped down. 
uh, and it is touching off the face of the spindle which on a 50 taper is pretty darn large uh, took a uh, clean rag wiped it down and uh, got everything clean then we set up here uh, and I'm gonna set the camera up so that it has a good view of the indicator as good as I can get um, and uh, let me see. Let's try zeroing that out. All right, we're zeroed out. Is that a little close? That yeah, might be better right there. So we're zeroed out, and then I'm going to fire the machine up to work the table, the indicator, back and forth across the spindle face this way. I get about a good three, three and a half inches of uh, of room you can work with here, and uh, that's plenty. You can certainly see when you're out in that amount of distance. So let me go ahead and fire the machine up. Okay, you'll note that I don't have a tool in the horizontal spindle and it would be very bad if I was to fire up the vertical spindle. So I have the horizontal spindle selected and we're going to go ahead and fire it up. And now I'm going to hit the table feed, and we are going to go back this way and watch our indicator. All right, I'm about 50 foul out in uh, that much direction. Come back again. grab the ratchet and I'm going to adjust some of that out. Come back up. Let's go back over where we were. Zero that out again. Then a foul, uh, and for my purposes, what I'm going to be doing, that's fantastic. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the spindle the other way, and we're going to go back in, on the y-axis. And uh, I've got the spindle in neutral, or I certainly wouldn't be able to turn this. Checked it in this direction in a while, so we could be out a little bit. All right, now let's go in.
to do is get the wrench, adjust these. This this part of the head doesn't have a nifty screw lift adjustment. It's good old fashioned muscle power. So I'm gonna have to get a wrench, loosen those four studs, and then uh, get the rubber mallet and tap that on around. So let me go ahead and get equipped. I'll be right back. All right. We're about uh, three thou out. I got the four bolts above you. You can't see out of the frame there, adjusted out. And um, I got the good old rubber mallet. And then uh, we are going to tap that. Back a little bit, and then uh, gonna manually crank it out here so you don't have to listen to the noise. Okay, that's pretty good. Let's zero it right there. Let's go back. Well, move around a little bit. That just might be a little friction, but we're pretty much right on the money um, with that. And uh, here's the tricky part. Once you've got everything adjusted, the tricky part is um, tightening up these bolts without losing your setup and it can be a real pain just kind of have to go slow and remember we're working we got all two we got two axes loose now And you gotta be really careful or you will totally hodgepodge yourself and find you doing this all over again. All right, two left. head pretty much plumb here yes it's hot and I work up a sweat uh, one of the things this demonstrate is uh, there's a reason that small mills like Bridgeports and uh, uh, small mills are popular because big mills like this are a lot of work um, if you've got a setup that you know if you've got a cut you need to take and and it's something that you know is going to take some time that's one thing to uh, spend the time to get something like this set up and take the cut. But, uh, you know, a half hour getting a set up on a machine this size will give you a workout. So, uh, but we are set up. I will also say that um, if you take the scales and you just match the scales up here and line up uh, your marks that need to be, you're right on the money. Uh, these machines, these types of machines are so well made made such a high level of quality compared to uh, your typical Bridgeport clone that, um, you know, things like the scales actually work. And a lot of machines are just a suggestion. Um, and here they work really, really well. Um, and uh, so we're going to go ahead and get set up and, uh, and do the work we're going to do, but I just want to do a quick little video to show you 
the tramming process on a machine like this a little different than doing it. Uh, you know, you're not sweeping well, uh, the spindle like you might do with a uh, bridge pour. You just don't really have to. Uh, it, would it be more accurate? Sure, but um, uh, it, it'd be a lot of work. You, know, you just can't even spin that spindle by hand hardly. So, uh, anyway, uh, thank you for watching.